it has to be global. If it's not global, if you have most of the resources and most of the building equipment and most of the automated machinery and most of the arable land and most of the drinking water, countries that do not have that will attempt to invade your country and take what they need. Every nation wants a piece of the pie. Keep that in mind. So to the degree that you try to live a sustainable life to yourself will not work because other nations that lack material will invade you. If you have a million sincere people that have no technical competence, I can assure you nothing can be accomplished. So you have to ask the question, can we build a society of sustainability? If you have no information as to the availability of resources, you cannot undertake such a project. Suppose you have a shortage of resources. That's the function of research labs, to make alternative materials that will substitute for lack of materials. Technicians do not tell you what to do or how to live. They merely carry out the function of designing elevators, transportation units, bridges, housing systems. They do not tell people what to do, what to think, or how to live. That's a, that's a mistake that most people make. They think that a resource-based economy has technicians that also tell you what lifestyle to use. No, they don't. The resources determine that. All that the te technicians do is build a system that can utilize those resources for the benefit of all the people involved. If you really wish to put an end to war, poverty, hunger, territorial disputes, you must utilize all the world's resources as a common heritage of all the world's people. Anything less than that will remain but the same problems that you've had continuously for centuries. What is a resource-based economy? I'm sure you've all heard about it, but a resource-based economy is entirely different than anything that has ever existed in the past. Most decisions were made by kings, politicians, statesmen, but nothing based upon resources. To better understand the meaning of a resource-based economy, picture an island somewhere in the South Pacific, and you want to know, you really want to know, how many people can that island support, and to what degree can the extravagance of the island be maintained. First, you have to know how much wood there is, how much water, how much arable land. Once you do a survey of the resources of that island, that can best be the method for determining how many people it will support. If the materials do not exist, you can only design a culture based upon the materials that do exist. You can only grow food based upon the arable land area and the water surrounding the island the fish, crustaceans, all the other things. And if you have an ag agronomist on your island, or a series of them, they can advise you as what is best to grow in that tropical region. So you really need technical competence in order to arrive at decisions that make sense. You cannot arrive at decisions that make sense by consensus by asking people what they want. You have to find out what the island has to offer. And that's what you can determine the future by. All other systems will fail. Politicians have opinions about everything and information about nothing in particular. Therefore, you understand that the decisions are not made by the majority of people. They're made by the majority of people that have technical competence that have information in the areas you wish to excel in and methods of scientific scales of performance.
Unfortunately, money doesn't represent things in existence. If you set a value on every tree, every inch of arable land, all the water, and you printed money proportionate to the resources, so that the money represents resources, then it can have meaning. But today, that is not accomplished. Although they may tell you that uh, demand will really bring about these things. No, demand doesn't bring about the things available resources do. And if money doesn't represent available resources, it has no basis for social management. When you live in a false society that bases its wealth upon money, then that society itself will collapse eventually, not because I say so, because it's not based on physical reference. In a resource-based economy, where production and automation can turn on more goods and services, there's no need to use money anymore. resource-based economy has millions of slaves, but they're machines. And machines do repetitive, boring, and dangerous jobs. That's what the machines are for. They're not to put you out of work. If they can turn things out faster than you, we don't need you working. In fact, we don't want you working in industrial plant. We want you to go back to school and study whatever you're interested in, whatever you think you'd like to study, whatever you feel you'd like to understand better. Now you have to consider what I'm saying. The reason nations invade other nations is because of scarcity. When a few nations control most of the Earth's resources, you've got to have territorial disputes. No matter how many treaties you sign or laws you make, if you don't declare all the Earth's resources as a common heritage of all the world's people and bring all the separate nations together in one unified system, there is no solution other than that. And this is why we recommend a resource-based economy.